Yesterday, uh, if you guys didn't know, you checked my videos, I did a Hex and Pulse Chain video. However, we started looking at it this morning and realized somehow there was a mistake and only six minutes of that video got uploaded. Only six minutes of that video got uploaded. Uh, didn't even really get into the, a lot of the stuff I want to talk about in that video. Uh, and so we, are, we deleted it and we are re-uploading it. Hex is not a scam. There, I said it. People have been begging me for years to do a full Hex review and breakdown. Today, everyone is getting their wish. We're finally going to be jumping into the Hex and Pulse Chain ecosystems. And of course, can't mention these projects without mentioning their founder, Richard Hard, who's facing some intense scrutiny from the SEC as we speak. Will Hex and Pulse Chain investors be doing their best Richard Hard impressions while wearing Gucci this bull run? Or will orange jumpsuits be more appropriate? If you watch all the way until the end of this video, I'm gonna be doing something I have never done before. I'm going to actually be telling you what I think about Hex. Let's get it. I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> Welcome to Ben Armstrong Crypto X. Don't just trade crypto, experience it. Start your crypto journey off right by hitting that subscribe button and joining Ben Nation. Today, we're gonna to talk about Hex and Pulse Chain, two of the most interesting and controversial projects in the entire crypto industry. If you're from one of those communities or you're interested in Hex, make sure to smash that like button so I know I should make more content around this ecosystem. Let's start with Hex since that's where everything with this project begins. Hex is the name of the project and it's also the ticker. So that part is very easy to remember. Figuring out where Hex is ranked among other crypto assets is an entirely different story. That's because most of the platforms that track these metrics like CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap don't actually include Hex in their rankings. Based on its market cap of about $1.7 billion, it should be ranked around number 49 just below MakerDAO. You won't find it there on the list. You actually need to search for it to find the page. One of the things that keeps Hex off these rankings is that it doesn't have centralized exchange listings and no centralized exchange volume. Something Hart has been adamant about. You know, not your keys, not your crypto. We shouldn't need to have crypto on centralized exchanges, but we do. Hex actually is DeFi, but I digress. Even with the suppression campaign, Hex was still one of the top performing projects of the last bull run. The market cap hit a high of $80 billion at its peak. Obviously, it's way down from that now, but many other assets are down as well. So the crash of Hex was not unique for the last bear market. Richard Hart launched Hex in December of 2019, and it was basically an airdrop. This was almost a year before Uniswap's famous airdrop in 2020. This one was interesting, though, because it was targeted at Bitcoin holders, even though it was launched on the Ethereum network as an ERC-20 token. You were able to claim 10,000 Hex for each Bitcoin you owned, and this was back when Bitcoin was still below $10,000. There was a catch though. 90% of the claimed hex was locked for one year, so you couldn't sell it all right away. Users were also encouraged to stake their tokens for even longer with higher rewards. Hex offers insane yields for staking though, with an average of 40% APY. It was designed to be a crypto take on the traditional financial instrument known as certificate of deposit or CDs. This is the basic utility of the whole project. The rates sound too good to be true, but it worked out pretty well for a lot of the holders. Even though the price is way down from the top, nothing about the system has ever failed and stakers have always been able to get their tokens at the unlock time that they agreed on. This model has still created a ton of controversy and I'm sure Richard Hart's big personality has a little something to do with it. If you have a big personality and you wanna be social, you should check out our channel sponsor, Stake. Stake is the world's largest social casino where you can chat with other DGens and earn stakes cash or gold coins while you play. Visit the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to get your account started with Stake. Fun games, social chat, and more. Ben Armstrong Crypto X is powered by Stake. One of the most common criticisms about the project is that it's a Ponzi scheme, and Richard Hart has got some very interesting responses to that. He says everything's a Ponzi. Even the entire economy is a Ponzi scheme, and I think he's got a decent point. Of course, he makes the distinction between scams and Ponzi's. Some Ponzi's are scams, but according to him, not all of them are. As you would expect, Dirty Gary and the SEC, well, they don't see things that way. The main accusations in the SEC's case against Richard Hart is that he raised a lot of money from the public and spent those funds on luxury items. We all know that he liked his luxury items, especially that Burberry bonnet. But he was also very early into crypto and made a lot of money on his own. He was a very early Bitcoin miner, guys. Some of the criticisms, well, it's valid and doesn't look great. First of all, there is a white paper for Hex and the tokenomics are not clear. There's also a wallet where the staked funds are sent, which the team presumably has access to. So it's not in a smart contract. This means that you needed to put a certain amount of trust in Richard and the Hex team. He said that he didn't publish a white paper because nobody actually reads them in the first place. 
This is probably true, but it's still good for building trust. The few people who do look through the white papers usually vet them for the rest of the crypto community, so they definitely have value even though the average person's not reading them. Richard Hart is very entertaining, and from my experience, he's a lot of fun to be around. I also think he makes a lot of great philosophical points about the nature of money. But to be honest with you, I don't know what to think about anybody at this point after everything I've been through for the past year. But Richard Hart has faced some issues, some legal issues in the past for internet schemes like spamming, so it doesn't look great. I'd also like to see more transparency from these projects with detailed white papers and tokenomics breakdowns. Richard likes to keep things mysterious though, which is why the feds have had trouble tracking him down. They serve papers to him in Finland where they think he lives, but they've been unable to contact him in person. He stepped back from commenting publicly for a while, probably taking the advice that he got from his lawyers. But now he's back to defending his projects, talking smack to his haters online. This will probably be a case where he settles and pays a fine, or maybe he just goes full cyberpunk and avoids dealing with the charge altogether. From what I've seen in crypto, the law usually catches up with whoever they're going after, but if anybody can get around it, it's probably Richard. It will be interesting to see what happens because I think Hex could have an insane rally if he wins the case or is able to settle for a fine. Even if he loses the cases, but still avoids the worst case scenario of prison time and is able to continue running his projects, that will still be very bullish for Hex and it will give the project a new level of legitimacy. This is gonna be similar to what we saw with XRP, even though this is a much smaller example. Even in the face of all this drama, there's still a strong community of Hexagons who believe that Hex will return to its former glory. For this to happen, Richard Hart would need to win his case against the SEC and prove all of his haters wrong. Another important part of this ecosystem is Pulse Chain, a layer one smart contract blockchain that launched in 2023 after years of anticipation. Pulse Chain has the ticker PLS and a market cap of $2 billion. Pulse Chain faces the same type of suppression that Hex does on the rankings and is not included on the list by market cap. If it was listed, it would be in the top 50. View space is higher than Hex and running right along with Stacks and VeChain. Pulse Chain also does not have a white paper or a clear tokenomics breakdown. Leading up to the launch, crypto holders could sacrifice their assets on Ethereum in exchange for PLS tokens. There was also an option to donate to charities in exchange for tokens. The amount of tokens the user received depended on the timing and size of the sacrifice. The rates were better in the early days of the sacrifice period and gradually decreased as time went on. Pulse Chain is a fork of Ethereum that was designed to operate basically the same, but with lower fees and faster transaction times. This was a bit different from other layer ones because it didn't copy the code with some tweaks and start from scratch with the assets. It wanted to port over every single token on the Ethereum network, so you would have a Pulse version of every asset that you had on Ethereum. This was an ambitious plan, but the launch had some major issues. There were problems with the high transaction fees and a bug that led to some liquidity providers losing money on the Pulse X DEX. The project managed to recover from the sloppy launch and seems to be running pretty smoothly now. You don't see a lot of big tokens launching on Pulse Chain, but the ecosystem and the community are thriving. When it comes to total value locked and daily volume, Pulse Chain is in the top 10 most active blockchains according to DeFi Llama. That's incredible. It seems that one of the reasons for this is because Pulse Chain has attracted new people into the community who didn't come in through Hex. There's a ton of overlap between the Hex and Pulse Chain communities, and most Pulse Chain users are vocal Hex supporters, but not all of them. There's a growing segment of the community that's looking to distance themselves from Hex and establish their own independent reputation as a layer one smart contract platform. This is most of the NFT community on Pulse Chain, which has been attracted to the network because of the promise of low fees. This is a small but growing segment of the community. This division in the community might sound like signs of drama and instability, but I think this is actually pretty bullish. It shows that an actual community with a diversity of opinions and ideas is starting to use the chain. This is the goal of public blockchains. If hexagons were the only people to use Pulse Chain, then it would not be a success. The fact that there are people using Pulse Chain that don't want anything to do with Hex or Richard Hart shows that the ecosystem is expanding and bringing new people in, even with the SEC action hanging over the project. Some of the top applications on the chain are the Pulse X Dex and Liquid Loans, a lending platform. Together, they have over $400 million in assets held across the two platforms. There's also a growing NFT community that's found a home in the Pulse ecosystem. So it still has real users with an actual community. But look, I have to apologize to the Hex community. When Hex launched, I was very hesitant to call Hex a scam just because many other people were doing it. But all the detractors that were saying that, it made me very nervous about covering it on this channel. So for years, I treated Hex with kid gloves. I like Richard. I always have, to be honest. People know Richard and I are friends. When he was in the States in 2022, he actually came and visited my studio. We went out to lunch, rode around in my Lambo, and went to the weekend concert that night in my suite. He did tell me my Lambo was better than his. 
it was an awesome time. But I've always been very nervous about Hex because what if something went wrong and so many people called it a scam? I needed to allow Hex to prove itself. And today I can tell you, I will no longer be treating Hex and Pulse Chain like second class cryptos. I can't tell you they will make you rich, but I can tell you they do work and they are actually DeFi. What's there to argue at this point? Can Hex and Pulse overcome all these obstacles and become top projects? Find out what I think, you'll have to wait for my prize prediction video to see where these projects rank and how they stack up against the competition. What do you think of Hex, Pulse Chain, and Richard Hart? Let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to hit that like button on the way out. It helps us keep the lights on. Be blessed. Bye.